about HIV AIDS, what should we tell them? I think we should show them the vision. If you want a healthy life, what current rate are you having? What are the action steps are you going to follow to reach that vision of becoming a healthy? Yeah. And furthermore, I think we have to tell them the dangers of HIV, how it is spread and how they can get it. Uh, I want to talk about, I think if we tell them about the vision, they should have a clear mental picture mm. of knowing what you truly want. Mm. I think they will not meet those problems. Yeah. If yes. you know what you want, mm. you have to set your action steps, you have to set your goals yeah. that will lead you to achieve those things. Then, not yeah. the vision. For example, if someone wants to become a nurse, mm. then you should know her current reality yes. and also the action steps. Mm -hmm. And if we, she has that vision of being a nurse, she can't do other things that will dream her to be. Yeah. Even in the, funda the fundamental, the fundamental choice you make, yeah. it, it leads you to what. If you have decided to do this, if you know, if I take this route, I may get, I may be trapped, or I get this route, so you decide to take a right route. And, and, um, Today, some of the students from the URDT Girls School are visiting another school in the Kagati area to talk about AIDS, HIV girls' empowerment and the creative process. These girls come from some of the poorest families in the region, but their education in the creative process has put them in the position of building the lives they want to live. Girl, please. Araman, 
and others brush spots. Then we also do have counseling and guidance during when we are at school doing Saturdays, where we acquire different skills like interpersonal skills, the skill of awareness, assertiveness, not aggressive. Most girls are so aggressive to boys. When a boy talks to you, you just back, abuse him, you do anything. But we don't encourage that. <laughs> That is where you find like a girl you have talked about her. Maybe you girl, I love you, you girl, you are beautiful. Instead of there are skills that you are being taught how to handle such a people, how to deal with them. But for you go ahead abusing it, him, you you look at that boy. Why are they talking? You can imagine, eh? And <laughs> The girl presenting talks to the group about the creative process and how it begins with a vision of what you want to create. Next is to understand the current reality you have and from that structure create action steps you need to take to accomplish your goal. This is a process called structural tension. There are action steps you need to take. You want to reach here, but you are still here. Because you are students, so now the choices you make, the decisions you make, you have to see that they are all. They are all, they are all made to make you attain or reach to what you truly want. Awaken with fight. Pick up the spear, pick up the shield. The enemies within and in the world. Come, come, join up the battle. Aid is the killer. Aid is the lion. Aid is the beast. Who is to go? We are to go. The fact is that the majority of approaches for supporting the developing world do not work, especially long term. One reason, most of them are problem based. The problem, whether it is poverty, starvation, cultural conflicts, environmental mismanagement or lack of education, generates specific types of actions. The way the problem is defined almost always defines the solution. If we said the problem was starvation, send in food aid. If we said the problem was disease, send in medical aid. This situation leads to a structure in system dynamics called shift the burden to the intervener. The more those who try to help by bringing in resources, the more they are pulled into the system, which has the long-term effect of weakening those being helped. The way URDT envisaged is that people can actually work for that which they desire 
irrespective of whether they have problems or not. And development had for a long time focused on how to get rid of a problem. Now this is what we are taught in uh, in in most of our most of our life we are taught how to work around problems. So find solutions to problems. But now this is how do you create the life you want? How do you work with for the aspiration that you have and put it into being? Over the past decades, billions of dollars have been squandered on well-intentioned programs that had little chance of living up to their noble aspirations. The by and large development work in uh, Uganda in particular and Africa in general was based on the premises of relief, aid, every time there were crises, the international community would uh, intervene and that kind of uh, approach did not uh, lead to permanent or lasting change. Often development aid is based on the premise that developing nations don't grow because they lack financial resources. But financial resources have relatively little impact on growth rates when compared to other factors. As Hungarian-born British development economist P.T. Bauer argues, economic achievement depends on personal, cultural, social and political factors that is people's own faculties, motivations and mores, and their institutions. The fact is that most approaches to help the developing world have often backfired and had a negative impact, the opposite of what was intended. Food aid programs have increased dependency on the outside world while diminishing the ability of local agriculture to produce food. According to a recent agency for international development, Many African institutions officially responsible for planning and implementing development are saturated with development assistance, paralyzed by administrative inefficiency, staggering beneath a burden of complex and different donor requirements, and are themselves in danger of becoming obstacles to development. So the question was, can there be another way of approaching development without relying so much on aid? which aid, of course, we also know has a lot of strings, a lot of conditionalities. And I think above that, uh, the, the, there is a tendency to think the one who is bringing aid knows better than the one who is receiving aid. Another aspect of the lack of success of most developmental programs has to do with the fact that they were imported from abroad. Besides the shift the burden to the intervener pattern, there is also a lack of understanding of the indigenous cultures that are needed for a program to succeed over extended periods of time. A typical example of this pattern was the Lake Turkana fish processing plant in Kenya. The Norwegian government invested $22 million to provide jobs to the Turkana people through fishing and fish processing for export. However, the Takana are nomads with no history of fishing or eating fish. When the plant was completed and operated for a few days, it was shut down. The project remains a white elephant in Kenya's arid northwest. So the question was what would be the most effective way? And luckily enough, um, Sirivana Veltkamp and his husband, her husband, Han, uh, and the Ugandan friend, Eustace Rutiba, had gotten in touch with the Robert Fritz, who had started a training, a thought process in using the principles of creating, where people uh, look at what they truly care about, what their aspirations are, rather than looking at what the problems are, which uh, always use the knee-jerk approach. So then they designed a program that would do help the communities to sit down and look at what the life they want for themselves, what the, the life they wanted for their families, for their communities, and ultimately for the nation. So that was a departure for us from using the program approach. What I like about We Are Duty is the methodology we use that is the visionary approach or the creative process. People are actually actively working for 
the aspirations, you know. You have uh, a, a family clearly defining their vision. In five years, this is what we want. And they are going to work towards it. It is a, a true and the most perfect approach that we can use to bring about sustainable development. And we are learning from other countries, like for example in uh, Ethiopia, they used to have cycles of farming every 10 years, and then the people would come in with a lot of aid, a lot of support, they would organize concerts. So in the short run, it would look like, wow, we have a relief and they eat and they, they, they think the problem is gone. After a period of time, the capacities of the citizens to produce food also goes down continuously, and yet then they start to over so those cycles. So the Uganda Rural Development and Training Program, which is a, a success of the Uganda Food and Peace Project, uses the premise that people have aspirations, they care for a better life, and therefore it is to just engage with them so that they can make those kind of choices. The visionary approach, if we use it very well, it can lead us to sustainable development. Because you create, every time you, do, you achieve what you want, you create another thing. Once you've worked with people to come up with their aspirations, refine their visions, they have to assess where they are at any given moment in relation to that vision or aspiration. And then they set up action steps on how to go about it. So they are deeply involved in the evolution of the idea, the analysis and assessment of where they are, good or bad, and how to, you know, bridge that, resolve that discrepancy between what they want and where they are. One of seven children, Irene lost her parents by the time she was two years old. She lived with her uncle, who she loved very much. But when she was in primary school, he also died. She needed to earn some money to pay for her school fees and got a job in a market. The owner of the market raped her. She got pregnant and had a hard labour. The baby was healthy. She had wanted to be a motor mechanic her whole life but was told that because she was a girl, it was impossible. Once she had entered the URDT vocational school, she had a chance to pursue her dreams, but with many complications. The principal had to take us in class and told us, you close your eyes, see what is your, at your home, look under the beds, what is your home doing, what do you want to change now? If you want to change something home, what is the step taken to change home now? You know, in the class I used not to be active, but I could go to him personally. I said, Principal, you said we, we close eyes and see home. Now, for my case, I have no home because my parents are not there. My uncles denied me because of the fistula. What, what is the home I have? Now, he told me, no, I didn't. What do you want to be in the future? Because in what can you create now to change what you've been thinking? He told me, when in a creative process, when we are teaching creative process, we are teaching you how, what can you think which can change your life. We know you have no home. We know you, your parents, you don't have them. He told me, excuse me, you can change your life, sit down, what do you want to see your life tomorrow? You draw it for me. I drew it, he told me, what is this? What, which step are you going to take to reach that? 
I had to tell him I think I should start the match and work hard. I said no. You know that you, though you work hard and study hard, remember in due to studying there are challenges and due to working hard also we have challenges. You how are you going to overcome the challenges? He used to train me in that. Now going back home in my room, I could mm, reflect on what he has been telling me. Now in creating my life again, what can I do? What can I think best for my future? Now I told me, Irene, when you're creating these things, remember you a girl. Secondly, people you will hear people say that you will not make it, which means you will have something pulling you behind and something pulling you up. Remember, what is going to pull you behind? Those are people who are going to say you're not you're not capable of doing that. Can, which means you're going to have that structure tension. You know, you have what you want, but there are people who are telling you will not make it. How are you going to do it? You, he guided me in that way, and it helped me a lot. Because when students could say no, and make me sit behind it, because that I'm wasting their time. And it didn't like it, because they could not even allow me to touch anything. But when I go back again to principal, principal tells me, no, don't complain. At this time and this moment, you should not complain in life. What you should do, learn how to resolve the structure tension I'm telling you. When I'm teaching structure tension, it means those are the challenges you're going to get in order to reach what you want. And it helped me a lot. Wherever he tells me that, I go back. I did it and so I was actually best than those who, who have been seated in front. Yeah. I said, okay, now you can do it. They started also, they picked on, and even principal used to help me, tell them, help that girl, help that girl. And finally, I succeeded, and you attended my graduation. <laughs> now, I'm on, you know, I don't know, because sometimes we think something we want, and now I saw that, again, the level I'm on, again, I've created another one. I'm seeing that again I want another, because I am seeing I want again to upgrade. Now again I've created again the structure tension. After the graduation, last time I was telling principal, yes, I was telling after the graduation I think I'll be finished. My vision is done. But again, why is it that I'm seeing that I want again to upgrade? He said now each step you finish, you create another one. If you want something in life, you have to create that structure tension. And Mwalimu always tells me, what do you want? Tell me, go back, put it in written. <laughs> Don't forget. That's what has helped me, and I'm seeing at least how changed my life.
So since 1987, we have been engaging with the communities, designing programs that work in areas of water, sustainable agriculture, in rural technologies, um, looking at all those things that the people care about, how to generate income to support their projects. And we worked with a number of women groups, youth groups, and communities, villages to protect water springs. So we would sit down with the communities and say, what do you want to see happen in your community? At the beginning, it was not easy because they were not used to that approach. They, they want you to come in and ask them what the problems, and the list was long. And we tell them, no, wait a minute, we didn't come here to solve problems. We came here to see how you can work for a better life and think differently and act differently. So through what we call community action planning in the communities with the awareness and thinking, so we said, okay, what life do you want for yourselves, for your community, what changes? So we would use the structural tension, we had learned how to use that one, where, is, where do you want to be in two years, three years, in one year, where are you now? So that the people start appreciating that there is a difference between where they want to be and where they are. And then they would come up with action steps, what to do with who and when, and uh, the priorities were very clear. They wanted to have clean, safe water. Uh, they wanted to have good food. Uh, of course, by then the, it was called the balanced diet. They wanted good food. They wanted good housing. They wanted the sanitation, things of the trains. So those would inform, actually they are the ones which informed the program design of our interventions, emerging and coming from the communities themselves. And then they would set up working groups, uh, those in charge for health, those in charge for agriculture, those in charge for environment. Then we come and uh, train them again in the technicalities of farming, the technicalities of organizing, how to help a group also make its own vision and know where they are and where they want to go. So we've been in Uganda here at URDT specifically since August of 2019. We've been at URDT for about nine months and we came from sort of professional backgrounds working on the grind, never really had any exposure to something like the creative process. Uh, for me personally, uh, I come from an engineering background and everything is problem solving, problem solving, problem solving. So coming to URDT and seeing the creative process in motion and at work has been really enlightening for me. In terms of development, I think that the creative process personally, in my opinion, is the way to do it. Um, you can look at development in terms of relief efforts, but when you look at the way URDT is educating women, looking at the potential there and seeing what can be created when you empower a woman to make changes in society. For me personally, I love being involved with an organization who approaches development that way because I just don't think that the relief efforts, which are problem solving, really can make an impact in our world for the long term. I completely agree. I think from a development standpoint, for decades, it's always been about solving the next problem. And what you see is one step forward, two steps back. Places that have been quote unquote developing for years and years and years are moving forward so slowly because they move forward, they move backward, they're oscillating. And I think the creative process can be an incredible tool in development to eliminate that oscillation and to get developing nations moving forward without taking those steps backward. This couple was in poverty and in debt a number of years ago, but they used the principle of structural tension to change their lives dramatically. 
After training in the creative process at URDT, they began to chart a vision of what they wanted, which included a flourishing farm business. Now they have the farm they wanted, which is growing bananas, coffee and livestock. They have a nice house and a steady income, something their friends and family scoffed about when they started out to create their vision. They have gone from poor to affluent by local standards. They regularly teach what they've learned to students from the local schools. So our vision was this, earning not less than three million per month. And uh, our current reality by, that, by then was that we were in negatives and uh, we didn't have any income as a family. And uh, when you want to settle, the fact is there is always what we call a head, what I may say, what I may call a head. A person, an, an initiator, a person who begins something, or a person who holds a vision, and that was my husband. Uh, he included me and shared the vision with me. He already had our vision, and he, I've told you this is our current reality. We normally demonstrate this using this elastic rubber band. You can see, this is the current reality where you are standing eh? where you are standing in the poverty when there is nothing to write home about when you are crying everybody is laughing at you that is what we call the current reality but wh what you are aiming at what you are looking at eh? you may be looking at a very beautiful house that is what we call uh, the vision eh? you understand mm -hmm. it, 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 it may not be already in place but you look at it as if it is already in place, so complete, so beautiful. You look at yourself driving. You look at yourself in a very good, uh, good life. So this is the 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 the, the, the vision. And when you are you you are you want to move towards your vision, you have to walk moving from your current reality, which is here, slowly by slowly taking each step. And that space in there is what we call the structural tension. Mm? You have to resolve it in order to car to move towards achieving your what? Your vision. I'll give an example of the impact because the impact is at individual, family, and the whole community. But at the community level, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to mobilize you know, people or to organize people to work together for you know, something that is good for them. So in this particular sub-county called Chenzige sub-county, there are two communities who were separated by a swamp and for more than 30 years, they have tried to find ways of how to, you know, connect these two villages. Once they connect that, you know, if they had a, a permanent route through that swamp, they would be able to access, you know, markets, health services, education services from a broader scope uh, in the nearby town center. But within a period of two years, when they engaged with a, a, a graduate of Aru, this graduate used the same principles we, we promote, help people to define the aspiration they have, refine the vision they have, look at where they are, and then they develop action steps on how to get there. One of the action steps they developed is once a week, and in this case, one community is settled on Thursdays, Another community settled on Wednesdays, the neighboring community. And the people diligently worked on this road. Now, when they had made significant progress on it, they decided that, okay, can we, they talked to the district local government, which then brought equipment to have a better and permanent road. It was now put in the district budget. Last year, that road was launched officially. It didn't stop at that level. Because other communities were seeing what was going on here, they started benefiting from this road. There are six other villages who are doing the same. 
That's the kind of transformation that we are talking about in respect to having uh, impact at the community level. There are many other examples I could give, but that really shows that, yes, transformation can begin from an individual and spreads out the whole community. My name is Anyenge Christina Jok, a second year student at African Rural University. My name is Adgonza Fiona. I'm a student at African Rural University and I'm in my second year pursuing a Bachelor's of Rural Development. I was introduced to a course called Fundamental of the Creative Process. I was first in the URDT Girls School. Before joining URDT Girls School, I didn't know anything concerning the visionary approach. In that, I was dealing with the problem solving orientation. The fundamental of the creative process, which changed my life orientation from problem solving to principles of creating. But when I joined the school with my parents and we had a workshop for one week, I was introduced to the visionary approach, whereby we were told to develop a vision for five years. As a family, what do we truly want to bring about in life? But earlier on, I based my life on problem solving. After seeing a problem, that's when I would really actually react. But currently, I no longer react to any problems. I see, I create what I really want, and I've realized that I am the predominant creative force in my real life. From the time I joined the URDT family and learned about the visionary approach, I went home and sat with the family members. And we agreed as the family, what do we actually want to bring about in life? After being introduced to this fundamental of the creative process, I had to enroll my family members, which has really impacted my family members. At first, we used to build our home state based on problem. After realizing problem at home, then we can come out with the solution. What do we really need to do? But after me joining here, I've seen change at home. My father really changed. He used to be someone that if you tell him to do something, he say, no, I cannot do what I cannot manage. And we agreed we needed to set up a permanent house that has all the necessities that make up a house and it becomes a role model. It took us some time to achieve that because we had set a plan for five years, but it ended up exceeding five years. But by all that we were we are still focused, we managed to achieve that and we are now constructing our permanent house. In fact, now we are closing it, but it is put up and it is roofed. So this year we are, we are going to be entering our new house, seeing that our vision is getting into the achievement. So at the end of the day, all these costs have shaped my life as individual and the life of my family members and the community members at large. Yes. So what I said, I said I have to be the example and I decided to upgrade. Not only that, but also when I completed my course, I went and carried out the baseline survey in my community. Then I looked at what is the very big challenge facing the women in my community. And I found out majority of the women lack of the basic needs in their homes, whereby plates, saucepans, they have scarcity. They have very many children, they have few mattresses. Then I said, what should I do on this? I started up a women's circle or women's association. And we sat with the women, I was like, what do we actually want to bring about changes in your homes? I want to see you progress as you learn from me, as I learn from you. So we agreed and we started up a saving society. So with this circle, we do savings and credit. Some amount of money, a half of the money we save is used to purchase household assets. And a half of the money is used to borrow the members, they go and invest in agriculture and in their businesses, such as that they get more money. This fundamental of creating really made my life change in a way that everything I do, I based it on creating. So the visionary approach has really 
changed my life because now I know what I actually want and I'm working towards achieving it. <laughs> have a unique approach to education which we call the two generations approach whereby we are training the child together with the parent they learn together they uh, formulate the family vision then they analyze their current reality and develop actionable steps towards uh, realizing their set vision so we look at the child as the icon for development in this respect. We, the kind of families where these children come from uh, that we find most of the parents have not gone to school, they are not literate, but when the child joins the school, we, we, we believe that this child learns together with the parent. And this is done in the different workshops that we usually organize for, to, to create a forum for, for learning. The child, uh, first of all, is engaged in a number of activities, which activities help them to develop at individual level. They develop skills in speaking, they gain the confidence, they, 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 they can uh, address issues confidently, then they also get skills in uh, other, they get entrepreneurial skills, like in art and craft and other things, they are involved in agribusiness, uh, studies, they are involved in games and sports for their physical fitness which also has a connotation to, to, to the emotional well-being of an individual. So that one in itself makes my school unique. We believe that the child learns together with the parent the knowledge, the skills, the information that they, they acquire through this learning helps also to transform the homes where these children come from. We really see transformation in the homes, whether rural, whether urban, but the child when she's in school, she must be in position to ensure that this transformation happens, such that the quality of life of people is changed for the better. My name is Atgon Sayon, a student at UADT Girl School from 6. I joined UADT Girl School in 2010 when I was in primary 5. Before I joined the UADT Girl School, our current reality was, by then, poor sanitation, poor nutrition, domestic violence, whereby we couldn't handle any family issue. But when I joined UADT Girl School for the first week, I was with my mom. So we went through the orientation workshop where they taught us about very many things on how to make a vision. Then they made us to make a vision of what we truly want to achieve in future. We made our vision with my mom. Then after, they taught us about very many things like hard working, cooperation, how we can improve on our families by carrying out agriculture and very many activities. So at the end of the workshop, my mom came back home and 
carried out a meeting with my dad plus my siblings whereby she shared what we had learned in the workshop when I was still at school. Then at the end of the term, my mom, my mom came back from that school and we also went through another workshop which is held at the end of the term. Then after that, we broke off when we came back home. We also carried out another meeting where we shared everything that we had acquired from the school. Then we also carry out meetings at the end of every month and tell about very many things, what we have achieved, what we have not yet achieved and the way forward, the steps which we can take so that we can achieve everything that we truly want to achieve. In our vision, we wanted to achieve a permanent house, piggery project, banana plantation, we wanted to plant trees. By the end of this year, we shall have completed everything. In our vision, we also plan to plant trees. Also in our vision, we included to have the food crops like cassava, beans, sweet potatoes, which are already in place in order to improve on our well-being and lifestyle. When he went forward, Learning the workshop, they told us that us as a family and the parents, we have to be having food crops in our families. He took it as something serious. The food that we eat, we don't buy it, but we just harvest it from our own gardens. We also sell the supplies and the income God helps us to look after and pay school fees for my siblings. They also get the on how to carry out a forest station. Yeah, we also achieved that one, which was in our plan. We planted some bananas. And he saw when they took me to ID. To he earned a lot because very many things that we saw from there, he achieved them and which is making our family prosper. So he thanked the organization of the for taking us and give us guidance on how to prosper in life. He is begging the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but in our design, we had already thought about it that you cannot do development work if you have no successor generation who can take these ideas and then apply them. Because I remember talking to to the district administrator then said, but what do you intend to do in the long run? Say so what we have brought here is a permanent idea. All that needs to be done is how to embed it in the communities, how to embed it in their institutions so that it is institutionalized. And to me, the idea of institutionalizing the principles of creating was very, very important and it still remains important for me. I'm an artist and uh, I learned how to create fabrics, drawings, uh, sculpture and painting. And uh, basically well, uh, my teachers taught me how to put uh, different things in order for the purpose of passing exams or even selling. And then when I, I was introduced to the creative life orientation, I learned how to really focus what I'm creating with the passion 
I have in life, what I really want in life. And then it also brought freedom in, in a sense that I don't, I'm not obliged to do anything, but I do something because I want it. And then I, I choose different uh, uh, things to do in relation to supporting the results I want to create. So in a sense, the creative life orientation has given me freedom to, to, to choose the actions I want to make to support the results I want to create at an individual and institutional level. So, uh, for example, I work with students, I work with staff, and then we've learned how to organize different things using the leadership role to organize and focus on what do we want to see. And then we, we look at it in detail. And then when it's clear for us, we hold what we want to see with what where we are now. And then after that, we agree on steps. At the end of it all, you have a complete structure that is giving you freedom to create the results you want. I've been a leader to manage studies as a director of studies. I've headed teachers as a head teacher in the girls' school section. And I'm currently the coordinator of the education program working with the URDT schools uh, closely, the girls' school and two community schools. And basically, uh, it, uh, we use that as our organizing principle to create the results we want to see at personal level, at institutional level, and in the families of the students. And it yields great results. I must appreciate your ADT very much because from that workshop and the own workshops which were going on, I had a plan and a drawn plan in my book for the, for the future I wanted to be. But I want to thank you because I have achieved all what I wanted. I wanted a good house which I have built. I wanted the, a, 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 a farming a cattle farm, my farm, which I have already had. I, had a very, I wanted a very good compound, which I have already achieved. I wanted to educate my children, which I have already done. I'm now a free man and a happy man. You are, Dr. Mwarimu Moses assisted me to learn English. I learned computer, I know how computer is. Other side, I'm a traditional wisdom specialist to taught you are at an yeah. African rural university. Other side, I present the program Family Life Education every Monday. That's why it's achievement on my side. And I help the people in the village to taught them how you can behave in the family and the village. That is my achievement. In the workshop, Mwalimu Musese talked about visionary approach. And when he was talking about visionary approach, he talked about, he said, a man is a key to his own development. And he demonstrated a rubber band like this one. He said, if you want you always to be of this size, it's up to you. If you want of this size, it's up to you. If you want this size, it's up to you. Then I picked the idea and I was impressed. I said, no, I should do, do my best and uh, maximize what I can really do. 
When I went home, I started working hard day and night, evening and morning, yeah. until when I achieved until when I, when I achieved what I wanted it to be. I came to Uganda to work with local NGOs as a development pr practitioner and I met Mosheshe and I discovered that he was using a very different approach to call the creative approach to the to design of development interventions while other NGOs were using the problem solving approach. Me myself through interacting with Mosheshe I also changed my professional way of looking at how development programs were designed because I discovered that NGOs who were working with the problem-solving approach, they may have some impact, but it, they would never cause lasting change. While the pro approach Mushesha was using was really making a fundamental change in people's life, they would truly transform. So over the years, we we discovered that actually it's very important that if you want to make a systemic change, we need to set up a school as an example of how we should change young people uh, in such that to help them in such a way that they would become creators of their own life. So we say we need to change the education system and make sure that the principles of creating is being taught also in schools as it is a fundamental skill all people need to have in order to become leaders in their own lives. So we founded the Unity Girls School in 2000, and I can now say with confidence that in the course of time, we really see young girls who come to the school as very shy yeah, from their disadvantaged backgrounds to see them to become leaders, yeah, you can see that they have actually the structural tension, yeah, because they are very clear on the life they want, they know where they are currently, and we see them moving forward and become leaders in their own lives, and we see them transforming their homes and communities, and they become confident, and they have that continuous structural tension in themselves to always work towards a clear goal that they have formulated. We used to spend two days 
driving from Kampala and I remember my team of professors from Makerere. They said, what the heck? There is a lot of poverty near Kampala. Do you have to travel this way in order to do development work? There are so many problems. I'm telling them we are looking for the following. One, we want to go in an area which is uncontaminated with relief and uh, aid as it is known in this country because we had just come out of the war and everyone was expecting aid. Two, we want to be where there is the multicultural setting, where there are a combination of many people who are living together. And we are told such areas also have complexities in terms of differences and the tribe or religion. So yeah, we, we, we want to be in, in such area where the idea of the principles of creating rather than problem solving actually can take root. So we came here and we, as I said, we started the awareness workshops and going into communities and talking to each other. But what I think fundamentally was a shift for the communities. I remember one day we were talking about what they can do for themselves and what kind of training we can offer. Three days later, we have said we are a non-government organization, we are not a relief organization. And the chairman of the local council three stands up and says, we want to thank the president for having sent you here. So you can, you can imagine the people's expectations were, now that you have come, oh, we are safe. We are, you are going to come with the goodies from government and other relief agencies. So then I had to postpone departure. And we went through the same for another day to make sure that they understand we are not bringing relief, but we are bringing a new methodology of doing things. And to explain to them that every time we are responding and reacting, it is temporary. I gave them the example of when cholera uh, strikes. Everyone is very busy, don't drink water, don't boil your water, uh, don't eat uh, ripe bananas. There is a lot of beehive stuff. But when the cholera is perceived to have been gone, they go back to the old, the, the old habits. And I think they saw that. And so, but we say when you choose to be healthy, you choose to live a better life. The choices are informed by what you want rather than what you want. You don't want. So the, the first day they say, okay, I think we see there is some sense. So then we said, we are going back to Kampala because then we would come to Kampala and then go back. If you think this methodology can make meaning in your life as a community, please write inviting us. And four months later, we got a letter say we want to invite you to come and work with us. And that's how we came in April, I think, 12th, 1989. If we are saying this is where we are and we are moving towards this desired situation, we must design action steps that are going to, to help us reach our higher goal. So she talks of being with supportive friends. Do we agree with her? Yes. yes. Supporting friends are those friends who will always tell you the truth, who will assist you in academics, who will always, if you do something bad, they show you that mm, this is bad. That is a supportive friend. Yes, much left? Respecting yourself as well as others. Respect for self and others. Very good. Yes. More time for revision. So we talked about wasting time, not managing time well. Yes. Consultation. Consultations. Whom are we consulting? Yes. Very good. Next. Who hasn't said something? I think not. Yes, Muru? Having discussion groups. Discussion groups?
tamaze kuona ikara kana abanyamwe banga abandi bagenda kuona batusangiza mu tashisa kare kaptandike doktoram kyatulize mirembe ah ibena ititwena Kagari Community Radio, KKCR 91.7 FM, provides a voice to the voiceless and a platform for information sharing and dialogue among all development actors. KKCR broadcasts 18 hours per day in seven local languages and English. It covers effectively 10 districts and has an estimated audience of 1 million listeners. Its aim is to enhance peace, unity, solidarity and collaboration through information sharing and dialogue among all development actors. The radio has primarily a developmental function. The radio dedicates 90% of its airtime to education programs. It offers a forum to government officials, local leaders, women, youth, politicians, NGOs and other stakeholders to share their knowledge and skills to improve the quality of life of the rural poor. The radio gives voice to marginalized people to share their experiences and opinions. The radio is run by a team of professionals and over 100 volunteers, including the URDT students. When the people in Fort Potro, Kabarole, were evicted, and this is a, a very good turning point for us also, when they were evicted in 1994 from the National Reserves, they brought in ADRA, they brought in World Vision International, they brought in Oxfam, they brought in uh, there were about five agencies to settle the people in Bugangaizu. And one of the members of parliament said, you know guys, if you are going to succeed with this one, talk to Mushesha. About why? Those are NGOs. Uh, it's an NGO with a difference. So then the Minister of Labor and Social Welfare, working with the Prime Minister's office, they called us to go to Bugangais. And that's how we started the offices in Narwe and in Koko. Our approach was the same, say, let us sit down and look at where you want to be two, three seasons from now, because we have, this is rainy season, there will be another rainy season, there will be another season. Now. The, pro the challenge that they had, here is the group that has been evicted. So they are relying on aid and relief. So they are bringing this non-relief offering agencies like you are sabotaging the program. <laughs> they didn't see it as an opportunity. But with conversations about what changes can be over a period of time, they started slowly by slowly. We started with one village of the evicted people and another village of the indigenous people and we did, it, did that deliberately because we are telling the government that whether they are evicted or the indigenous people actually if you examine very closely you find the people who are here originally are poorer than the people who have come in but again their thinking is you know these are victims of circumstances so handle them differently i said no let us take the issue at a higher level rather than the event that has happened. We want development for everybody because they are not going, you are not going to have parallel development for the, for the evicted people and the newly settled and for the indigenous. You need to integrate. So, and we did the integration. I can tell you to date, Norway, Kisita, Nkoko are the bread baskets of the region. If you go there, the housing, the roads, the water systems, they have their own banks, they have their own cooperatives. Uh, we helped them also to secure money from uh, VOCA. And within a few years, I think it took only two years, they were wind from relief. And the takeoff was incredible. Now it is an independent uh, district. So because of what? Helping the people to have that structural tension, to see what to do and to accomplish in which period of time, 
where are we and designing actions in favor of what they want to create. And those that came in using the program uh, uh, solving approach, after the project was over and they went, the programs don't go beyond six months, one year, and then you see deteriorating. And I think that is the main difference between what we are doing here with the communities and what many agent agencies actually adapt, which is traditional and historical and familiar, because that's what they teach us in school. Because what we are doing is not taught in school. Yeah, it's because, as I said at the beginning, the contact between our partners in the African Food and Peace Foundation and people like Robert Fries and the later Peter, Peter Seng of Systems Thinking, that they brought those ideas into the development arena. Why is the creative process so well suited to development? It's because it is the most successful process for accomplishment in history. It's created the arts, science, technology, commerce, and so much more. People have a natural instinct to create. They also have an instinct to join together to create their lives, their communities, their societies, and their countries. And yet, most people in institutions think in terms of solving problems rather than creating the outcomes they desire. The URDT and its related organizations are changing that. They are proving that development is sustained by the creative process because creating generates the desire to create more and more. Of course, the question is, can people of various cultures learn how to create? The answer is obvious. Every culture, every country, everywhere has the arts. The foundation of URDT is from the tradition of the arts, which is, at its roots, the creative process. The arts, and therefore the creative process, is built into the essence of all cultures, and because of that, it is natural and instinctive to adopt it as a way of life, as individuals, as organizations, as institutions, as the world itself. <laughs>